All right, the Royal Enfield Himalayan. This is a 2023 model. We're doing a little first ride review. Let's get the show on the road. First of all, I want to say a big thanks to uh, Blackman Cycle uh, for letting me take out this bike and do a little review. Um, I've been to all the bike shops around here and when I decided uh, I wanted to do this and then wanted to uh, do some reviews, um, these are the people I decided I wanted to work with and uh, they've been really nice and uh, real supportive of uh, my channel. So big thanks to them. impression this bike is pretty comfy man I feel like I could sit in this saddle for a little while I am uh, 6'2 220 pounds um, so you know I, I'm, I'm a little bigger than the average guy they design these bikes for and nobody except for uh, Harley Davidson makes bikes for tall riders. I guess you could get a Hayabusa, but I'm really not into the, the Hayabusa. But we're gonna pull over up here and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this bike. I, I couldn't do it back there at the dealership because they had some music playing outside and copyright and all that, you know. But so far, I'm enjoying myself. Now, the Himalayan is not going to win any drag races. I mean, there, there's uh, no traction control. Um, it's it's very much a basic motorcycle and and sometimes that's all right you know uh, uh, less tech less problems they have a, a real big following um, almost like a cult following you know kind of like the KLR 650 cult there's a Royal Enfield cult this here is a, a single cylinder 411 cc bike air and oil cooled if you like working on bikes if you like wrenching on bikes you could buy this and maybe never see a mechanic I mean you could buy this you know get the tires changed and stuff like that do all the work yourself you know, a big uh, single cylinder thumper. Um, and that's the appeal for a lot of people. I mean, for years, people have bought the uh, KLR 650 and they like the simplicity, the, the, the uh, air-cooled single cylinder simplicity. And, and that's neat. Uh, you know, there's something to be said for that. Now, that being said, I do notice that it really takes a, a pull on the brakes to get this guy stopped. And this bike is $5,400 brand new. We're gonna stop right here. $5,400 brand new. And the reason right now is a good time to re be reviewing this 2023 model because the 2024 has come out. 
So these, you're gonna get leftover pricing. Over here at Blackman's and Emmaus, this is, I believe a thousand dollars off. You'd have to give them a call. Call Spencer, one of the salesmen. Um, they're real cool there, and uh, they'll get you down with, with a good price. But, if we look her over, we got a uh, 21 inch front wheel, and we, I think we got 17 in the back. So, so that's dirt oriented. You know, you want that little bit uh, bigger, skinnier tire in the front. Um, you got your crash protection. This is fuel injected though. Even though it's a simpler single cylinder air cold bike, we got a uh, um, fuel injection, which is nice. You know, um, the days of messing around with carburetors are, are kind of over. That being said, you do feel like this, this bike makes me a little bit nostalgic. I almost feel like I'm riding a 70s bike. When I was young, didn't have a lot of money. Um, just a kid, you know. A lot of us, um, well, me and a couple of my friends had these old 70s bikes. They were, uh, mine was a dual sport. But, uh, they say necessity is mother invention, right? My dual sport was a motocross bike. It was an enduro bike. It was an everything to me bike. This kind of reminds me of that. And, uh, boy, for the price to get a brand new bike for this price. And this comes with a three year unlimited mile warranty. Craziness. I wouldn't mind having one of these in the garage. Now for me, I would uh, do a lot of uh, dirt roads and, and uh, you know, you, it is what it is. Um, you're not gonna be able to, to go on real difficult single tracks. Um, but, how you doing? Good. No. You okay? Oh yeah, I'm doing a review of the bike. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, puppy. Okay, yeah, let's talk, talk a little bit about the instrumentation. You got analog gauges. Got a tachometer over here. You got your gas gauge. And then you have a, a gear indicator in the right. You have a... Uh, a Trip meter, odometer, uh, you switch it around right here. Plus this button, you can use to disable the ABS on the rear. And if you guys don't do a lot of dirt riding, in the, in, in, in the street you use your front brake 80% of the time. On the dirt you have to use a combination of the rear and the front because you don't want to put all the weight on the front tire. It could wash out in the dirt and slide. So you use a lot of your rear brake. And if you disable the ABS, uh, there are times when you can lock up the rear brake and slide. So that's pretty cool that, that they did that on this bike. Let's, let's get going and uh, see what else we could get into. Put it in neutral, maybe that'll help her out. So, power. This Himalayan has about 24 and a half horsepower, and it's got about 32 foot pounds of torque. Lots of torque. So, good for doing off road, doing a couple trails. Thumper. Um, it does have a removable baffle in the exhaust if you want it to be a teeny bit louder. Teeny bit louder. And, and that's neat. You know, I like that. Um, you could, uh, one of the things about a cheap bike 
is everything you're going to buy for it's a little bit cheaper. If you buy a set of uh, pan bags from BMW, it's going to cost you 2000 bucks. You get a, a complete set from Royal Enfield, and I believe it's $700. So, you know, not bad. All right, before we take off, let's do a little bit of uh, another little uh, walk around. This bike comes, standard equipment, with a center stand. Very cool to put it up on its own center stand, do maintenance, do chain maintenance, um, without having to buy a lift. That's pretty cool. Put some bags on the back. Like I said, you could put pan panniers on it. If it was mine, this would, a bike, would be a bike I would load up and take camping. For sure. I could picture myself camping for the night, doing trails. And if, if you load up the four gallon gas tank at 75 miles a gallon, and the way you're really just putting around on this bike, you're good to go for a, for a day and a half of camping. So, uh, let's hop on. <clears throat> There's a new bike, so I can't really um, rev it up too much. And you don't need to. That's not what this bike is about. We are going to go up Route 100 here. Because I want to see uh, how this bike goes at speed. Yeah, it takes a good pull on the brakes. Um, to get this stopped. And, and, you know, that's okay. Because you're not really lighting it up, like I said. It does not have self-canceling turn signals, but that's not a big deal. All right, going through the gears. Fourth gear, 50 miles an hour, about 4,000 RPM. That's all right. Uh, that's mainly uh, what you're going to be doing with this. The only thing you want to avoid is, you know, interstates. If you got to hop on the interstate for a little bit, you can. It will do 80, but you're not really going to have any passing speed. And uh, that's not what the bike was intended for, for sure. This is comfy. Now, for a guy my height, this windscreen isn't doing anything. It's actually directing the wind right up into my helmet. <laughs> I might take that off if this was mine. Yeah, this is neat though. I picture myself cruising around some farm roads. And uh, having a good time. And if I see a dirt road, I just pull off and cruise down the trail. Oh yeah, this just reminds me of the good old days. You know, less worries and uh, just putting along, enjoying life. That, that's about it for uh, second gear. You don't want to go too nuts revving it up to red line. Let's do a little turn around in here.
There we go. I am really having a blast on this thing. I knew it would be all right, but hey, this is really, it's surprising. I, if you watch my channel, I have a pretty fast bike and I enjoy uh, sports riding, but I could really see myself cruising around on the weekends with this. It's just so different. It's so laid back. And this seat is comfy. I mean, it's like sitting on a pillow. It is a little bit narrow. You know, uh, we could use with a little, little bit wider seat. Or maybe I just have a big butt, you know. And going around current, uh, going around corners, it, it, you know, it handles its line. It's just easy. It's fun and easy, this bike. Now, I don't think it has the power to uh, pull wheelies, but, um, yeah, that's not what you, what you need to be doing with this one. I could just cruise around in fifth gear, you know, 4,000 RPM, you'd be doing 60 miles an hour, not bad. A five-speed bike, it's geared a little bit tall, um, but it, it's easy, easy to deal with, it's not a problem. And this would be a good all-around bike too. If this was your only bike, you know, it, it's okay, it's kind of like a Swiss Army knife, it could do anything. You know, like I said, except long trips on the interstate. And that's okay. That could lead to different types of adventures. If you want to take a long trip, you could take a little time and, and plan it out over the railroad tracks. Standing up, it's all right. Uh, you could plan it off, uh, plan a trip using all side roads. You know, uh, how cool would that be, you know? Just see, uh, like, kind of like a Route 66 trip. And you, you try and find as many dirt roads as possible and little two-lane streets. And that would be cool, you know? And you could just search for different adventures like that. Let's take her back to the dealer. I almost don't want to take her back. I could see myself spending a couple of hours cruising around on this. Like I said, the seat is comfy. I could maybe do it with an aftermarket seat, get it a little bit wider, but it's plenty soft. You know, and uh, for somebody my height, um, there's not, we've got uh, pretty wide handlebars. And they're up high enough that, that uh, it's, it's a real comfortable position. But you could be a, a smaller rider. This would totally fit a smaller rider. Somebody, somebody who wants to get into adventure bikes, but they're a little bit shorter. And, and it's not as, you know, it's not going to scare you too much. It's definitely not going to scare you. This is a friendly bike that you go explore little country roads and little trails on the weekend. And if you're the person that just needs transportation, you're not gonna get much cheaper than this. I mean, something you can work on yourself. Um, Royal Enfield started in 1901. Pretty amazing. It's one of the same year as the Indian, I believe. Here we are back at uh, Blackman's. I almost hate to take it back, but I'm riding the Scram next, back to back. 
I'm gonna do uh, two separate reviews and then I'll be able to uh, you know compare the two because a lot of people have to decide between the Scram and the Himalayan.